Hey everyone, and welcome to Sisters for Financial Independence, where we cover topics related to money, motherhood, and everything else in between. Today, we're talking family-friendly ways to make your home more sustainable without breaking the bank. Small changes can have a massive impact, so let's create a more eco-conscious home that's easy on the wallet and the planet. Now, the tips I have for you in this video are something that your entire family Family can get on board with. Changing things up for ourselves and our family can be hard and can be a tricky thing. So what we want to do is implement these small changes over time. The first easy swap that you and your family can try on is to reduce or even ditch paper towels. Now paper towel usage does add up and if you also pay for the size of your garbage bins, these definitely add weight and size to your garbage. So what you can try to do is switch to more eco-friendly solution like Swedish dish cloths. These are wood pulp and cotton and they're reusable. They're good for cleaning up spills, for scrubbing dishes, wiping down counters, and so many other uses. And you can pop these in the dishwasher and they're good for so many uses, which can save you paper towels, reduce your waste, and also save you time. And they're also an easy switch for your family to take on. Swedish dishcloths are also compostable, so they're good for the environment and they last long. You can find dishcloths in a variety of prints, which is fun for kids to use. And you can also find them anywhere from Costco, Trader Joe's to Amazon. I will link the Amazon link in the description so you can see what they look like and how much they cost. But I will also be honest with you, will you get rid of these completely? Probably not from the start, but you can absolutely reduce your usage, meaning it might take you now a month or two to finish up a roll, and that can certainly compound and add up in the long run. It can also teach your kids about reducing resources and saving money from there. The next swap I'd encourage you to do is something that actually half the world already uses, and that is using a some kind of bidet system. Now, bidets basically use water to help you wash your private areas after you do your business, and it is a eco-friendly way for you to do that. Instead of using tons of toilet paper, which can add up in cost, as well as perhaps clog your drains, and impact your sewer system, using a bidet can be a game changer for your family. It is a fairly easy install and depending on what you want and what your needs, there are multiple types of bidet systems that you can install. You don't even need a new toilet, you just need some attachments to install the bidet. So I would consider getting this one so that you and your family can adopt this kind of new lifestyle. Bidets are super hygienic and it can leave everyone feeling fresh and definitely save you some money on your budget. But you wanna invest in a good one, in one that you can learn to use, that your kids can learn to use so that it is part of the family habits. For our household, we have one installed in each toilet. One is a spray and the other is something that you attach as a seat. So it really depends on what your family needs are and at some point your family will get used to using this and also help you reduce that cost for buying toilet paper and anything else that might affect also your drains down the line. The next swap I would recommend is to invest in blackout curtains. Now, this doesn't even require that your family get used to blackout curtains. It's an easy thing that allows you to save on energy for your entire household. If you live in an old home or a new home, drafty windows is a fact of life. By implementing and putting blackout curtains, you can save on your energy bills. The purpose of blackout curtains is to keep warm air inside for the winter and cool air in the summer, which means your AC and your heater won't need to be used up as much, which means less energy usage and means saving you money in the long run. The good thing about blackout curtains too is that you can take them anywhere. So if you are going from one apartment to the other, get neutral ones so that you can take that from one place to another and install that right away. 
Now, blackout curtains come in so many types of patterns, fabric, and so forth. And what you want to be looking for is something that will fit your need. So you want to look for something that fits your window, that totally covers it up. You want something that blocks out light as well as blocks out any of the drafts that your windows may have. So it might be, you might be looking for something with a thicker fabric or something that's double lined. The options are endless. I would check out Ikea for some inexpensive ones and of course Amazon for something more affordable too. The next thing I'd encourage you to do is put up an eat me first box inside your fridge as well as next to your pantry. And the concept is to put anything that's about to expire that you want your family to consume first inside this box. The challenge is that food waste is a real budget buster. When you're budgeting for your food, sometimes a part of that budget ends up in the waste through wasted leftovers, expired food, or food that just goes bad because we just did not plan properly or had enough time to eat it. So be proactive in the way that you meal plan and the way that you let your family know what's available to eat. The more you meal plan, the more you let your family know to prioritize what to eat before it gets into the garbage, the more food you'll save and the more money you'll save, which is a win-win. Of course, you do have to teach your family what it means to prioritize what to eat, but over time, kids will get it, other adults in your household will get it so that you can save even more in the long run. I've done a longer video where I share 11 hacks to help you reduce food waste and save money on groceries. Check it out here and I'll also leave a link in the description. And let me know in the comments what's your best way to save food in your household. The last tip I will leave for you in this video to help you be a bit more sustainable is to get efficient with your laundry. Now, I know there can be weeks where all we're doing is folding laundry, folding baby clothes, and so forth. So this might be the time to implement some new habits when it comes to clothes, when it comes to laundry. Here are a few that you can have your family start implementing. One is to review clothing before it gets put in the laundry. If it's used only one time, there might be another life for it. So instruct them to either hang it up or another way is to hang it up inside out so they know that it has been used once and can be reused one more time. Hanging clothes are previously worn can prevent it from accumulating dust. It can allow you to see it so that you know you have another use for it. And if it's also something that has sweat on it, it will also allow it to air dry so it doesn't accumulate bacteria and that odor. Laundry takes time. It takes energy and that all takes money to do. So if there are ways for you to be a bit more efficient with it, I would recommend doing so. I'd also recommend just observing what gets thrown in the laundry, how often things are in the laundry. If you're washing things constantly, is it necessary to do that? And really observe how your kids put something in the laundry or how your partner does that too. I'd also recommend reading labels on your clothes so you're washing your clothes properly so they last longer. Air drying is another method that you can use to save energy and to save money. I think we've taken for granted that we can actually put clothes outside to be dried by the sun and the wind. I also know that it can be time efficient to just put things in the dryer and get things done. But if you have something that's a little bit thicker that is not going to be used right away, Investing in a drying rack and putting those clothes maybe overnight so they dry can save you some utilities and some money in the long run as well. Again, it does require a habit shift and an energy shift. I think it's a minor change to help you be a bit more sustainable. I hope these swaps and tips have been helpful. Implement one, see how your family does. Change takes time, but small changes do add up. And you're also teaching your children about the value of saving resources in time, money, and energy. I do hope to see you in the next video. If you want to learn more about your consumption and how your consumption is affecting your wallet as well as the planet, 
I would check out this video that talks about spending triggers. I'd also recommend this video if you want to take on what's called a no buy challenge to help you address some of your consumption habits. And I will see you in the next video.